Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. Today, you're going to hear the second part of this amazing series, Full I Have Enough. I want you to open up and say, Lord God, speak to me today. How many people are blessed to be here? Would you raise your hand? Awesome, wonderful seeing you guys. I need you to do me a favor. Could you greet as many people as you can by telling them, I'm so blessed to be standing next to you today. Come on, go. Such a great honor to be right in front of you every single week. We are still in, in uh, our financial series called Full. And uh, if you weren't here last Sunday, you got some catching up to do. Last week, we discussed how... God has given us the ability and the power to produce what we need in our life. And today what we are going to talk about is how we, can, we need to protect all these blessings that God has given us. Now that we know that we can produce, we need to protect what God has given us. Especially, let me say this, especially because we live in a world that has a lot of deceit. A lot of people scam you nowadays, you know. A lot of people cheat you over nowadays. So you really got to learn how to manage what God has given you, all right? So how, how, many, how many people are, are, are excited to learn a new thing today? All right. We're, we got some great wisdom for you today. I hope you came here with a hungry appetite because you know it's always good to come before God with a hungry appetite because you know that God is going to fill you up, right? He's going to fill you with a kind of nourishment that you can't even get in a restaurant, that you can't get in the mall, that you can't get in a retail outlet. Only God can fill your deepest desires and your deepest hunger. That's right. I believe that God is going to fill you and overflow in your life today. Can I get an amen? So with that, let's say our favorite prayer here at the feast. You guys ready? All right, let's do this together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you guys are physically able, would you lift both hands in the air? Say this with me. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself, unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out! Because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my So the question is, how do we manage what God has given to us? How do we protect the investments that God has blessed us with? How do we become good stewards here in this world? See, I think it's really important for us to talk about this because like what I said, we live in a world that has a lot of deceit. People are trying to fool you. Some people are trying to scam you. How many people have been scammed at least once in your life? Raise your hand. Yeah, I've been scammed like twice in my life. And see, the truth is, my friends, if you think that scams and deceit is a 21st century invention, you're wrong. Because this dates back even way before, even before Jesus Christ came into this world. There was already deceit. In fact, I'm going to prove it to you. From the book of Genesis, we read the story of Jacob. Genesis chapter 29, verse 18 to 28. This is going to be quite long. So I need you to follow. Every, tell, tell your neighbor, follow. It says here that Jacob was in love with Rachel. So he told her father, I'll work for you for seven years if you'll give me Rachel as my wife. Agreed. Laban replied. That's the name of the father. So Jacob spent the next seven years working to pay for Rachel. But they seemed to him but a few days. He was so much in love. Everybody say in love. Finally, the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my contract, Jacob said to Laban. 
Now give me my wife so that I can sleep with her. So Laban invited all the men of the settlement to celebrate with Jacob at a big party. Afterwards that night when it was dark, Laban took Leah. Take this, not, not Rachel. He took Leah to Jacob and he slept with her. And in the morning, it was Leah. What sort of trick is this? Jacob raged at Laban. I worked for seven years for Rachel. What do you mean by this trickery? It's not our custom to marry off a younger daughter ahead of her sister. Laban replied smoothly, Wait until the bridal week is over and you can have Rachel too. If you promise to work for me another seven years. So... Jacob agreed to work seven more years than Laban gave him Rachel too. There's a lesson to be learned here, my dear friends. And the lesson is not keep marrying until you get the right one, all right? Or keep marrying until you find the right woman for you. That's not the lesson, all right? So if you're single, I don't want you to go running off and marrying just anyone thinking that after seven years, you're going to get to replace that person, all right? That's not how it works. Tell the person beside you, that's not how it works. There's a valuable lesson that Jacob wants to teach us. Here's the lesson, all right? Are you listening? This is, ha this is also our one big message for today. I need you to hold the person on your left, the, the, the hand of the person on your left. Are you holding that person right now? Look that person in the eye and say, before you make any major decision, you better look under the veil. That's right. That's our one big message. Look under the veil. See, the way I see it, my friends, the way I see it, Jacob could have avoided all that heartache, all that headache, not to mention all those years wasting away if he only did one simple thing, which was to look under the veil. Do you want to know why we get cheated in life? Yes? Ask me, ask me why. You must mahina pa. Ask me why. Because we allow our desires to rule over our decisions. I'm going to say that again. We allow our desires to rule over our decisions. Just like Jacob. All right, let's break it down. Let's break down what happened. Just to be fair with Jacob. Back in the day, women, when they got married, they wore a veil. That covered their entire face. Nowadays, we don't have that, right? Nowadays, you can see the bride see through. But back in the day, you wouldn't see the bride the entire ceremony. And the wedding actually took place in the evening. So it was very dark, it was very blurry, and it was very confusing for Jacob. But here's the clincher Jacob was so excited. I mean, imagine putting your, yourself in the shoes of Jacob. You've worked for seven years so that you can marry the girl of your dreams, Rachel. Would you be excited? On that day, you knew that you were going to get married finally to Rachel. It was marriage time, you know, it was game time. It was wedding night. And so you can imagine Jacob. He was so excited going up to the altar. He was so excited that he didn't bother doing the one simple thing, which was checking who was under the veil. See, Jacob let his desires rule over his decisions. He let his passion take over his prudence. He let his wants take charge of his wisdom. And I believe, my friends, that this still happens even up to today. And I'm no longer talking about marriage. Uh-uh. I'm talking about money. How many times have you allowed your desires to rule over your decisions when it came to money. How many of you have ever experienced someone offered you a very attractive investment, showed you the big numbers, and you just said yes? Just like that. Because you didn't even bother looking under the veil. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you got so excited over something, and you just said yes. You just jumped the gun. Let me share with you my own personal story. May I? When I was in second year high school five years ago, this is a true story, okay? When I was second year high school, my best friend, he, we had this schoolmate who owed him 2,000 pesos. Now, 2,000 pesos in 1992, there's the truth. In 1992, 2,000 pesos was actually a lot of money. 
it's maybe e equivalent to maybe about 20,000 in today's currency. And when you're a high school student, that's a lot of money, especially if you're dependent on, on your allowance, right? So anyway, he, owed, he was owed 2,000 pesos. And one day, after many, many months of not being able to pay my friend, this schoolmate of, of, of ours approaches my friend and says, you know what? I really don't have the capacity to pay you right now. But you know what? My, my tita, she sent me this bill. And if you're okay, can I use it to pay you? Because I know this, 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 this is worth something. He reaches out, out from his pocket and hands over money from the Republic of, of Argentina. 10,000 Argentine pesos. And you know what my friend did? My friend was shocked because he knew that it was foreign currency. He knew that it had value. So he said, okay, yes, fine. Quits na tayo. Bayad na utang mo. All right. So my friend, you know, he's so excited. You know what he did? He approaches two, two of his best friends, me and another friend. And he says, you know what, guys? If you help me look for a bank that can convert this, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to split it into three ways. Because he only owed me 2000 and there's so much to go around. Siyempre, kami naman, di ba? We got so excited. One day, we planned a trip all the way from Rizal to Green Hills, to a bank which we knew, BPI. And pagdating namin doon, actually, we, before we even came there, riding along the bus, you know, we were talking about all the things we were going to buy. I was thinking about how I was going to buy the latest Giordano Classics polo shirt, you know, the one with the collar. And I was going to buy the latest Mighty Kid rubber shoes. How many people know Mighty Kid? You guys don't know nothing about Mighty Kid. That's like the Nike of my time, right? Anyway, we arrived in the bank. We walk in, you know, walking like millionaires inside the bank. I'm pretty sure this is not how millionaires walk, but you know, never mind. So we walk up to the teller, present the money. Miss, papalit naman. Can you convert what we have? And you know, the teller receives the, 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 the bill. And you know, she stands up and walks over to the bank manager. And by this time, we were so excited because we were thinking, oh, maybe next she's going to go to the vault and, and get, you know, piles and piles of money to bring out. Soon enough, you know, a couple of minutes later, she goes back to her booth and hands over, opens the drawer. One by one, she pulls out a hundred peso bill, another hundred peso bill, and then a 50 peso bill. And then that was it. 250 pesos. Not even 250,000. 250 pesos. You know what we found out? Back in the day in 1992, in order for you to buy a bag of groceries in Argentina, you needed a basket of money. I'm talking about thousands of Argentine dollars just to buy something that's worth your while. But we were so excited that day that we didn't even bother. My friend was so excited receiving that cash. Lugi pa siya. Abonado pa siya. Sa pamasahe pa lang namin, abonado pa kami. Kulang pa pang lunch. Kulang pa pang dinner. What's the lesson here, my dear friends? Sometimes we jump the gun too much because we get so excited. We have a big desire. And see, that desire takes over us like, a, like an infection. And pretty soon, we're making the wrong decisions because of that desire. Just like what Jacob did. He let his desires take over his decisions. Now I know that after you leave the feast, you're, you know, you're going to make some big decisions. I'm not just talking about money decisions, not even financial. Maybe somebody's going to invite you to a, a questionable event, maybe a questionable party. Maybe somebody's going to invite you to come into a relationship. Before you say I do to any major decision that you do, might I suggest that you look under the veil and check your desires before you decide. Tell the person beside you one more time, look under the veil. Come on, you need to shout it in their face so they can hear it. Say, look under the veil. That's right. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Can I invite you to pray? Just bow down your heads. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this new word, this new lesson that you've given us. Thank you for giving us the capacity to produce wealth in our life, not just to bless ourselves, but we believe that we can use it to bless others so that we can be a blessing in this world. Right now, we ask you to teach us how to protect what you've already given us. Give us your word. 
for we want to learn something new today. We love you, we honor you, and we give you the glory now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Come on and give the Lord a big hand. Come on. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. How many of you are thanking God that you're earning money? Are you earning money right now? If you're earning money, just raise your hand. Business, job, whatever, monkey business. Um, just, just raise your hand again and just say, thank you, Lord. Isn't it a privilege that you earn money? Yes? It is, it's wonderful. To all the students out there, you know, one day you're going to be earning. I hope you have a side hustle somewhere that while you're studying in school, you're already selling something and earning. Earning is a good thing. But if you want to grow wealthy, by the way, by the way, this is a financial course. So this is talk number two of our financial series. And we do this at the feast because we believe that your financial life should not be separate from your spiritual life. Do I hear a loud amen? amen? That your financial life should be under the lordship, the kingship of Jesus Christ. And so because of that, we talk about it here in church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now here's the thing. To grow your wealth, your financial life, you need to respect rule number one. And rule number one is very, very simple. Ask me what? Complete sentence. What is rule number one? If you earn it, don't lose it. If you earn it, don't lose it. Tell somebody beside you. If you earn it, don't lose it. Believe you me, you're going to lose it if you're not careful. There are five wealth destroyers. How many? We're going to go through them one by one. Everybody say, I'm ready. The first one is very familiar to you. It's debt. Raise your hand if you have debt. Woo! That's scary. It's like I asked, who are human? All of us or most of us have debt. But it's a, it's a, it's a wealth destroyer. Ask me why? Many, many reasons. But you see, there are two kinds of debts. There's business debt and there's consumer debt. Now, I want you to know that even business debts, not all of them are good. Some people say, oh, if it's for business, you can borrow. I want you to know that as an entrepreneur, I always advise other entrepreneurs to avoid as much as possible debt, as much as you can. What you need to do, because I've seen it, I've seen it happen an entrepreneur with a very, very good business. And then he overborrowed. Can you say that with me? Man, that's the death knell of many businesses. Do not overborrow. Interest is very expensive. And if you want to, this is what happens. You build your business and then it's growing. You want to expand. What many people do is that they borrow on interest. Now, please understand this. If, you, if, if, the, if the loan is small compared to the income that the business produces, then that's fine. That's okay. But sometimes people overborrow. And when you overborrow, you begin to have a different perspective towards your business. And what happens is it emotionally affects you. Your thinking is warped. And then you don't think straight. And that's the reason why I always tell people, Avoid business debt as much as you can. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's possible, but as much as possible. Now, let me go to consumer debt. Everybody say consumer debt. Con oh, by the way, let me go back to business debt. Um, if you can grow your business organically, so much the better. Don't be in a hurry. Just slowly build. Save up and then expand. Save up and then expand. If you can do it that way, so much the better. Yes, probably you've got friends, entrepreneurs. You've got friends that they borrowed a lot, expanded fast, and they're now at the very top. You know what? For every one success, there are a thousand failures like that. So do not use one example on me. 
You understand what I'm saying? Let me go to consumer debt. One more time, say consumer debt. Almost all consumer debt is bad. Almost all. I'm not talking of housing. If you are going to borrow money to build your house or to own your house where you're going to live in, that's okay. But consumer debt means borrowing for your shoe, borrowing to buy a gadget, borrowing for appliances, borrowing for a trip. You understand? It's wrong. Elbow somebody really hard until the rib cage breaks. Say, listen. You better listen. My mom would tell me, live below your means. Did your mom say that to you? Did your grandma say that to you? Did your auntie? Listen to them. Live below your means. You know, if you can't afford it, what should you do? If you cannot afford it, what should you do? Don't buy it. Don't borrow to buy it. No, just don't. Can I, can I share some stuff with you? Here's a few verses I, I, I got from Scripture. Um, where is this? Proverbs chapter 22. Um, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a slave of the lender. Are there any people here who want to be slaves? No. Just so don't borrow. You know, if you really want something, what should you do? If, save up for it. Why not save up for it? Tell somebody beside you, save up for it. Can I tell you a story? Many, many, many moons ago, when I was a younger guy, I wanted to buy a really, really nice rubber shoes costing 2,000 bucks. Now, during that era, that Jurassic time, 2,000 pesos was 2,000 pesos, really huge. So, so I said, okay, I'm going to save up for it. So 200 pesos a month, 200 pesos a month, 200 pesos, 200. After 10 months, I was so happy. I had 2,000 pesos in my hands, and I could buy that rubber shoes. You know what I did? Ask me what? I couldn't buy it. Ask me why. I felt, you know, I had 2,000 pesos. I could buy the shoe already, but it took me so long to save it, so hard to work for it, it wasn't worth it. The rubber shoe was not worth it. You know what I did? Ask me what? I bought a 500 peso rubber shoe. That's what happens when you save up. You realize how valuable it is. You realize what hard work means. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why if you want something really bad, save up for it. Because then you realize the value of money and the value of hard work. What happens is when you've got a credit card or when you've got, you've got a place where you can borrow, what happens is that you don't see the value. Oh, I can get it and I'll just pay you know, on installment every so often. My dear friends, if there's something that you've got to understand, debt is like a hunter. I got this from Dave Ramsey, one of the financial teachers. In Proverbs 6 verse 4, it says, Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter. Imagine you're a gazelle. Spell gazelle. Deer na lang. Deer. <laughs> you're a deer. And then you see a hunter. And when a hunter is there, what does the deer do? Does the deer say, Oh, hunter. Hi. Oh, you're scary. Oh, you've got a gun. Okay, I better go. You might hurt me. Oh, nice grass. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Oh, there's water. Mm, does, the, the, does the deer do that? No. When the deer sees a lion, when the deer sees some menacing... Prey? Uh, Prey? Prow, prow, prowler? Prow, never mind. Predator. Predator. When, 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 the, when, the, when the deer sees a... Run! Runs like a like a bullet. My dear friends, I have an announcement to make. Debt is a hunter. Debt is a, is a lion. Make sense? You know, you get texted by companies, credit card companies, asking you to borrow, giving you opportunities to borrow left and right. What should you do? Run. 
run. So many people are so proud. Oh, Brother Bo, I'm offered to... They, they want me to borrow. They're so happy. Run! Run! You, get, please! It's a death. It's, 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 it's a wealth destroyer. Am I speaking to somebody in this place? Yes. Now, you could, you could tame the lion. You could. And what I, I have in my wallet five credit cards. I use cre credit cards. But I know how to use them. I pay for them at the end of the month. Are you listening? And credit cards pay me. If you know how to do it. And if you know how to use it. Um, I never borrow from my credit cards. So very, very important. Let's go through sc more scripture. Are you ready? Oh, gosh. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Can you read that for me, please? Oh, no one anything except to love one another. You like that? You know, the Bible even says, you know, don't, don't owe anyone. Don't, and that means don't borrow. You can't just tell somebody beside you, stop borrowing. Are you ready for wealth destroyer number two? Wealth destroyer number two is scams. Everybody say scams. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17, it says, Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be fu full of gravel. Um, excuse me, miss. The Manila Hotel par party may be there in the building. Yes. Or you're getting married. Manila Cathedral is over there. It's... That, my friend, is what you call a scam. <laughs> Pretending to be someone who is she or he's not. And I, I, I just want to share something very important for you to understand this. That scams, by nature, present something very beautiful to you. And then will promise to you 2% a month interest, 3% a month interest, 5% a month interest. I met a scam, a scammer, promising me 5% a day interest. And what you need to do is look under the veil. Always look under the veil. And in the Philippines, there will always be scams because there, will, there are always people who like it the easy way. I have a, another scripture verse for you, Proverbs. You know, it's amazing. The book of Proverbs was written 3,000 years ago. And it's as though it's so applicable right now, as though it was written yesterday. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. Read with me, please. Hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. That's what a scam is. A scam is put your money with us, you know, in, in, invest here, and then we're going to multiply your money really fast. 2% a month, 3% a month. Basically, it's about wealth destroyer number three, very much connected, it's greed. Can everybody say greed? Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, together please, wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. My dear friends, in, can, I, can I make a confession? I've never fallen into M. Goldex or... or Aman Futures, those are the big scams, right? You, you don't know. They're all over the news. Um, during my time, decades ago, it was Multitel. It was Manchester 5. I mean, the, the names change, but the system is the same. It will dangle in front of you a red juicy apple, 2% a month. Put your money here and we'll make your money grow at 2%, 3% a month, 5% a month. You know, it will try to lure you in. My dear friends, it's greed. It's greed that pulls us into scams. Here's my confession. Early on in my, spirit, in my, in my financial journey, this was 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I got into some businesses because my friends told me, invest in our business and your money will grow. 
And I did. I put my money there. And you know what? Six of them, six of those businesses failed. Six of those, I lost all my money in those six investments. Friends of mine, not strangers, real friends telling me, please invest in my business. And I do not blame them. Ask me why. Because they told me, Brother Bo, invest your money in my business and we will give you 2% a month, 3% a month. And I said, yes. I didn't know. Now I know that a normal business cannot return 2% a month to an investor unless you're selling shabu. Do you understand me? Now I know. Before, I did not know. So when I lost my money in those six businesses, I'm telling myself, I cannot blame them. I'm partly to blame. I entered into that investment because I wanted 2% a month, 3% a month. Are you getting me? It is partly my fault. I am to blame. Are you listening to me? It's greed. This is tough talk, I know. Wealth destroyer number four. Laziness. Laziness. My dear friends, I got into those six businesses, invested there without even studying the business. I didn't research the industry. I didn't. I did what many Filipinos do. Oh, bahala ka na. We love that word, bahala ka na. We like it the easy way. We think it's as easy as that. Just putting our money there and then it grows without doing any research, without doing any kind of hard work. Laziness. I see it all the time. You know, when, when, when young people come up to me and they tell me, Brother boy, I want to be like you. I want to be a successful entrepreneur. I like asking these questions. Oh, you want to be a successful entrepreneur? Yes. What did you do last weekend? We went to the beach. The weekend before that, uh, party. The weekend before that, uh, shopping. <laughs> and, and I laugh and I say, are you sure you want to be a successful entrepreneur? Because if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, you're going to work very, 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 very hard. In the past decades of my life, I've tried to balance my business and my family and my ministry. And I've been working 16 hours a day. Can you do that? Can you do that that I don't have weekends? I just work. And especially in the first five years of being an entrepreneur, my gosh, it was like sleeping at midnight, waking at five in the morning every single day for the first five years of my, being an entrepreneur. Can you do that? Can you pay the price? That's a question, by the way. Can you? Look at somebody beside you and say, can you? Oh, here's another example of laziness. After giving a stock market seminar, I always have this, a few people, not, not too many, you know, one, two, three people come up to me after I give my stock market investing seminar, telling people it's the safest investment because you're going to invest with, you know, the biggest companies in the Philippines, SM, Ayala, you know, that, that, that's, that's safe. At the end of the seminar, people come up to me and say, Brother Bo, matanda na ako eh. Brother Bo, I'm not techie. You, you told us you're going to invest online. Brother Bo, can I give you the money? You be the one to invest for me. That's why people get scammed. You just want to give the money to somebody. So my, my, my script is this. Do you do Facebook? And the answer usually is yes. If you know how to do Facebook, you'll be able to know how to invest in the stock market. It's the same thing. My dear friends, once upon a time, you did not do Facebook. It's too complicated for you. I'm talking to people my age. I'm not talking to people, to, to my kids. You know, they were born, you know, with Facebook. But if you're my age, once upon a time, you didn't do Facebook. It was too complicated. Now, you know how to send emojis. 
you can learn this. You've got to learn it. Because wealth destroyer number five is ignorance. I go everywhere. And sometimes, there, there was one time I spoke, you won't believe this, I spoke to a room full of CPAs, accountants, and they managed millions of money for their companies, but they did not know how to manage their own money. They were in debt, they didn't know how to invest. Accountants, are you listening to me? I've spoken to doctors who can perform surgery. They can operate on the brain. They do not know how to operate their own money. They're in debt. They don't have savings. Are you listening to me? Meaning to say, there are people who are... I was talking to a captain of a ship. Captain. He was earning 500,000 pesos a month. No savings. No investments. I asked him a question. Captain, if you lost your job today, how long will you survive with your savings? And he said, zero. I've got so much debt. And dami kong utang, earning 500,000 pesos a month. Now listen to me. I, can I ask you a question? Was that guy intelligent? Was that guy intelligent? He was. He's a captain of a ship. He can steer 120,000 tons of steel across the ocean, miles upon miles upon miles. He's got the brains to lead a ship. He does not know, he doesn't have the brains to lead his own personal finance. Are you listening? You need to learn how to manage. Get away from ignorance. Ignorance will destroy your wealth. You've got to study. You've got to learn. And this, this is something I really want you to do. My dear friends, there's another ignorance that you need to fight. Ask me what? For Filipinos. We do not know how to help. We do not know how to love. When relatives come and ask you for money, many Filipinos, they just give. Why? Because naawa sila. Even if, even if, every time they ask, give, 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 give. And you're creating a parasite. But when you create a parasite, are you really helping? You're cursing. You're cursing. And in the process of helping, you're not able to save. You're not able to invest. Why do I know that? Because of Anawim, our ministry for the abandoned elderly. We pick up lolas and lolas from the streets and their former teachers. They were earning money. There, there, there were two principals in Anawim. There was one dentist in Anawim, earning money, but now abandoned by the family. There was a film director, would you believe? Assistant film director. He was earning money. Abandoned, poor. I speak a very strong word for you. You need to learn how to love. You need to learn how to really help your relatives. You need to invest so that in the future, you will still have money and still be able to help people. You cannot just help others without being able to help yourself. Do I hear any, a loud amen? I'm going to invite you to stand up. I'm going to close with this one message. Jacob worked for seven years to marry Rachel. Leah was given instead. By the way, this is an ancient story where polygamy was allowed, okay? So it doesn't apply anymore today. I hope that's clear. Wonderful. Jacob worked for seven years, was given Leah. He goes to Laban, the father, and says, I wanted Rachel. And Laban said, okay, I'll give you Rachel, but promise to work for me for another seven years. So he got Rachel, 
and then he worked for another seven years. Spiritual writers have looked into that story and have used this as an analogy for the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Ask me how. In the Old Covenant, you work to gain the approval of God. In the New Covenant, you get the approval of God and you work for God out of gratitude. Leah, Old Covenant, Rachel, New Covenant. I want to use that story to apply it to pursuing your financial dreams because this is a financial series. Do you have financial dreams? I want you to pursue your financial dreams in a very, in, in, in a way that's not pursuing Leah, but pursuing Rachel. When you pursue your financial dreams, pursue them with purpose, with patience, and with peace. Everybody say that with me. Purpose, patience, peace. You can pursue your financial dreams from a spirit of tension or from the spirit of trust. You see, you've got to pursue it with purpose because this pursuing of your, of your financial dreams is not an ego trip. It's not to prove to the world that you've arrived. You want to grow your financial life because of the purpose of God. You try to earn material wealth to build a spiritual kingdom. It's not about you. It's about God. Pursue your financial dreams with purpose. Pursue your financial dreams with patience. Say that again with me. Patience. You're not in a hurry. You're not in a hurry. Ask me why. Because you know that even now, because of God in your life, you're already rich. You really are. There are people who are like working for Leah and they, and they work and they work and they work for years to get their Leah. You, you already have racial and you work and work and work out of gratitude that you already have the blessing that you need. You already are rich right now. You're not impatient. People who are in a hurry, that's, these are the people who get scammed. You're not in a hurry. You're willing to wait day in and day out, working and working, because you know the blessing is already with you. Finally, you pursue your financial dreams with peace. Everybody say peace. Ask me why. I have met a lot of poor millionaires. You know what I'm talking about? They've got lots and lots and lots of money, but they've got a scarcity mentality. And they're always petrified. They're afraid that they will lose everything one day. And they're really poor, even with all their money. My dear friends, are you a Jesus follower? Are you a real Jesus follower? If you are, you know you're going to lose everything one day. <laughs> You're going to die. And you're not afraid. You're not. You know that whatever wealth you have now and the wealth that you're going to earn, it's not yours. You're at peace with that. You're so much at peace with the fact that you're just managing God's wealth. Can I invite you to pray with me in the name of the Father? and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Can I invite you to lift up your hands and, and open your heart to God and just say this after me. Father in heaven, I thank you that I'm already rich because I have you, because you love me. And I thank you that I own a beautiful relationship with you. I am blessed. Jesus, I follow you. And I will pursue my financial dreams with purpose, with patience, 
and with peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to bring out your novena to God's love, maybe from your phone or in your wallet. And if you didn't bring it with you, that's fine. Lift up all the dreams in your heart. I want you to say this prayer with me. Everybody say, Jesus, from this day forth, 
until the last day of my life I want to follow you I want to live for you every area of my life under your Lordship even my finances is under your Lordship Jesus thank you I am rich because of you and all my dreams shall come true Amen That was amazing just being able to hear that word that message and i pray that that message transforms your life listen to me there are so many people who still need to hear that voice still need to hear that word and you know i I'd, I'd like to invite you come and be my partner so that we together will be able to do this for any gift whatsoever that you want to give and support to this ministry i will give you the first message of our series full I have enough. I'll ship this to your home. And for a gift of 5,000 pesos or more to the ministry, I'll give you our Christmas package. It will have right here, shipped to your home, the entire series of full I have enough in DVD. I will also send you companion four volumes 2018 and be able to bless you and, and nourish you every day. Plus my book, How Good People Can Become Rich as a follow-up of our series full plus Didache. All of this I'll ship to your home. Thank you so much. The contact details are on the screen. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life. <laughs>